Hey guys, today we'll shoot the localizer approach into Daytona Beach Airport. We're at 3,500 feet and halfway through the DME arc that's going to lead us to the final approach course. Reported ceiling is at about 700 feet and will act as if the glide slope is out of service for the purpose of this approach. This time, we're not going to load the approach into the G1000, but rather fly it with our ground navigational aids to show you how you can perform the approach even if you don't have a fancy GPS on board. If we open the plate for the localizer 7 left approach, we can see that the localizer frequency is 109.7, the final approach course is 070, and we have just under 10,000 feet of runway available. If we look at the notes, we can see that Daytona has non-standard takeoff and alternate minimums, not relevant for us in this approach. If the Malzar approach lighting system is not operative, we have to increase our visibility to 5,500 feet. As we look on the lateral graphical information, the approach is fed by two DME arcs, one from the north and one from the south, as well as ATC vectoring. We'll join the final approach course through the north DME arc. Folig is our final approach fix and Zopri is our step down fix. Also DME is required for the approach and we have the GPS replacing it in our G1000. Looking at the vertical layout of the approach, we need to reach Folig at or above 1600 feet. Then we'll descend to Zopri to 680 feet, which is also our straight in minimums in this case. We also need 4000 feet of visibility for this approach, and our missed approach point is the runway threshold. The missed approach procedure will have us climb straight ahead to 700 feet, followed by a right turn to Smyra and climb to 3000 feet. As we set up the plane for the approach, we currently have the Ormond VOR station on our NAV2 radio, that's the 112.6, and we're using it for the DME arc. We're going to tune in the localizer frequency on NAV1. Lastly, we'll make sure we insert our minimums to the system. As we follow the DME arc and maintain 16 miles from the station, we're going to reach the lead radial of 223 from the Ormond VOR. We're going to turn left for a 30 degree intercept of the localizer, which means heading 100. We're going to switch the CDI to NAV1 and intercept the localizer. To identify the final approach fix, we're going to set our heading bug to point at the 194 radial from Ormond, which is the 014 inbound, which will give us the final approach fix position when we are established on the localizer. As we cross Folig, we're going to reduce the power to 1700 RPM, flaps 10, maintain 90 knots on the approach, and start the timer. Also, we'll lower the altitude bug to the step down fix altitude, which in this case is also the minimums. From this phase, we are focused on flying the localizer indication while expecting the minimums altitude and once in a while looking outside and trying to see the runway. Now we can change the heading bug to point at the 35. 9 heading, which is the 179 radial from Ormond, so we can identify the SO prefix.
As we get closer to the MDA, we want to look a bit more outside the cockpit to try to either see the runway or the approach lighting system. Remember, if you see the approach lighting systems, you are allowed to descend to 100 feet AGL, unless it's an LSF2 approach lighting system, which then you can descend towards the runway as if you've seen it. We should be ready to level off once we hit our MDA and maintain that altitude until we either see the runway or reach the missed approach point. Once we have the runway in sight, the approach switches to a visual landing, idle the power, reduce flaps 30 below 85 knots, and touch down safely. That was the localizer approach. See you guys next time.